and you, you'll be blown away by this i love it this is just one line that you have to write to just fetch a request and you are already getting all the states here eight six seven right it's just you do not have a refresh or anything it's just invalidated and refetched because it has cache and all of that so it's just super fast you just need to set up the code first and then it's just adding the requests and doing whatever you want with just two three lines max after this you will never be using redux just normal redux hey there i'm Soumya. welcome back to this channel recently when i've been working uh, on a react native app and making some really cool stuff we have been using redux toolkit query or rtk query to manage api requests and uh, just storing it as, as a state over our app it is super cool and i, I did not uh, know about this before we implemented it and it it is just so good and if you if you don't know what it is basically uh, if you just go to Google and th this is what uh, Google says. So the main features, as it said, is that it just reduces a lot of code and increases a lot of functionality, right? For a lot of functionality, you'll have to write very small code and also uh, caching. So I just wanted to show you this so that, you know, after you see this, you will never be using uh, create async thunk and uh, all those uh, messy Redux codes. So obviously you should know the basics of just Redux toolkit before you, uh, so that you can understand how RTK query solves all of its um, messiness. If you're a complete beginner, uh, I mean, you're just using use state and stuff. Uh, I'll recommend just go to Redux, uh, use it once. Because when you develop big apps, you, you can't use use state to fetch API and because uh, you know you can, might need that data all over the app right so you need a, st a store and that's why you we use redux so i just said this because many are starting to learn Re react and uh, this just go redux just goes over your mind but you should just try implementing it with a to-do app and you'll know why redux is needed and yeah cool so but to know rtk query i'll just recommend you should know redux before we dive into the video or you can just see the magic of it so i just wanted to show you this because after using rtk query you'll, you'll not have to write these extra reducers and uh, you know this create async thunk it's a very cool feature in rtk query called tags uh, and you, uh, you'll be blown away by this i love it and you have to watch till the end because obviously it can be implemented at the end um, so what happens vaguely i'll just tell that you make one api request and after you make that request, you are changing the content of another API requests result to, for example, you are editing a user's name and there's a list of users. So you need that list of users to be implemented with the new user's name that you have changed here, right? So there's a feature that when I just uh, tap edit and done that, that after that request, this list it is automatically going to be fetched and new user is going to come from the database the edited name and i don't have to just manually go and also make that request I just stick till the end for to see that and yeah let me just show you how this works and after this you will never be using redux just normal redux um so first of all uh, what i will do is uh, i'll show you some api requests that i have created and we will be implementing this so this is my postman and um, this has some api request that we will be implementing this is just normal get users i'm using a, a site called go rest dot co dot in to make this fake api requests so if i send this uh, in in get users you get these things uh, in post user uh, if i just uh, let's say my name uh, and if i just post this and i'm passing an authorization token to that i got from this site and uh, so uh, it worked and if I now just go to get users and I just hit send you'll see a new user is added I just want to show you this because we will be implementing this uh, APIs in RTK query and I just want you to be you know just get the context of how the API is working right uh, the thing on which we are working and it's exactly like that the update thing is also if I just um, you know uh, get my this is my ID I'll just replace this ID here and so it will update that user only with all the things that I provided so I'll say just change my name to SEMA or right and I'll send it and it has been changed and if I just go to get users uh, just watch this I'll to send and boom the name and everything has been changed update user like, like exactly like that delete user and get user details same thing right um, so now let me show you uh, the rtk query the pull stuff the first thing you have to do is just install so i just make a uh, create next app cra a normal react app and then inside this app i'm, I'm in the app folder i'm just going to install uh, yan art redux chase toolkit and this redux chase toolkit only comes uh, it it uh, it has inbuilt rtk query uh, uh, redux toolkit query so yeah 
we'll just wait for some time this is, okay cool so we just installed it so now let's uh, write some code first of all let's just run this app right um yeah and start and it's running cool okay so first of all uh we just you know as i said you need to know a bit of a redux to know these things uh if you know this uh, it this uh, this thing will be rt query will be no brainer for you and you will just love it uh so yeah first of all what we need to do is for example now we are will be working with this uh this this these requests right to user request uh so let's make a folder so this these are good, good practices for example in react stuff uh, either you write pages here or features right let's say features and let's say this is a some user feature i'm working on right and i'll inside feature i'll just make a new um users let's say users and in that users i will declare a file that will contain all my api request all the rtk query stuff so this is a good practice that's you, that's how you do it so users api and js so this users api will contain all the uh, api requests that are related to users but if a new engineer comes and sees the code base you'll just know features users and it contains all the user apis cool right so uh, let's now uh, make this rt query thing okay so how do you do it so first of all you have to import something called create api right create api and fetch base query um from uh, let me just copy this thing from here and there you go okay so you have to first of all import this thing and then you have to create an api how do you do that so first of all let's export this um we'll call it users api right we'll call it users api and i'll create the api now in this uh, open scholarly brackets and here you have to write the reducer path a name you give this to this reducer um right so reducer path name will be let's say the same thing right users api right um same thing and then here you have to write the base uh, query okay so in base query you have to write fetch base query and here you have to give a base url so basically base url you have to give a base url so what is a base url right? so uh, you can see these examples right so for example uh, let me just show you what is a base url okay so basically in this uh, these api requests what is the base url so base url uh, is the url which remains constant in all the uh, api request right so if you'll see this you have uh, this thing and in post users you have the same thing uh, in updates user this changes but this part remains the same so basically you can say that this is the base url uh, according to, i mean technically you can say this but uh, normally you would use this v2 because um, normally when you are making a large app you have to store this base url in some constant and you will have more features right so then you have to basically uh, you know the base url should be just public because uh, we are using just you are making just this users things that's why I'm, you can use the base url as this because this will be remaining constant in all the api requests but when you have a big app users will also change so basically the big um, api url would be this right so you know what we'll just follow good practices and we'll just take this right uh, to just make way for other features too which by the way we will not be implementing but just good practices right so basically this is the base url and these things just change in our app right so we'll just copy this and we'll paste this here uh, sorry in a call a string right so base query just takes this base url that never changes uh, in api request right and then we will do the endpoints it's pretty self-explanatory right explanatory right so endpoints takes the endpoints right like so this is the syntax for it right so here you can name the endpoints endpoints means that uh, this is a endpoint right user slash 820 says this is the endpoint and uh, to get users uh, this is the endpoint uh, this is the endpoint right so you have to just write this here so for example i just want to get my users right so to get my users my endpoint is this base url, base URL slash users right so what i'll do is just let me call this endpoint get users here there is a cool concept of query and 
mutations like what are these things before i explain you query and mutations let me just implement this thing so that you'll uh, you get an idea actually how this thing works okay so builder dot query uh, and here you have to just do um, this and then you have to mention what is the query actually uh, this, this may feel like a lot of mess but once you implement it uh, you are never going to get back okay so yeah cool so this query now takes some things the url which by the way is the extension part of the endpoint what is the endpoint so here we want to use uh, the get request which is the slash users right uh, and it is get request so you here you describe what is actually the uh, what is the endpoint what is the request going to look like in the query right so that's why it is called query right so users and actually we don't need to do this because we have already given this here right uh, so users and it also takes a body so as it is a get request you don't need to send the body asking like okay where does it get the things that it needs to send from the body or to the body right so here um, this is the function actually here when you call this api somewhere you you can pass some things here and you will be doing all these things right so for example if i send to you have to send name you can send name and you can just assign the body name right so things like that and we'll all be doing this but this is just a simple get request so we don't need body here and here you can also pass the method right method could be get or anything uh, you know whatever right but if you don't give it it will just assume that it is a get request so we don't need to do that so url is just users and query is um, everything is done so we are uh, doing this and uh, you just set up your first um, endpoints right so now that is if that is set up you just save it and it is working fine and i'll explain all of it I'll, I'll show all the requests everything just hold tight just i'm just want to show you how this works so what we did was just set the base url of the request and then just make one endpoint that is user's endpoint it's a get request and all of that so we did this now we need to provide this uh, slice this api to the store or uh, to the store if you know redux obviously as i said you need to know a bit of redux to understand this so store is the thing that is above the app and the the app that and that stores all the slices or all the states so that needs to know that hey this is something we are doing so we will make a store now so I'll call it store.js in the main src folder and um, actually did i do this in the src folder yes okay cool so here you need to import something called configure store um configure store from uh, you know from redux toolkit and then you just need to set up the store so export cons store is equal to configure store Okay, then it takes reducers which are basically slices all over your app like like this one user cpa is one of them so reducers um and uh, now here how uh, this is the format to actually give it uh the the users uh, the the thing user api reducer that you remember we declared a reducer path right so you have to do something like this the syntax is uh, for user apis yeah this is uh, for for rt query uh, things like when you have used create api this is how you add this reducer so you have to do um, users api uh, it will import it dot reducer path uh, right or reducer path will be equal to users dot reducer right so you are done you just set up a reducer and i'm just going to copy a middleware code and this is it right so i'm just copying this from the i'm just going to show you what i'm doing so this is the uh, rtk query thing tutorial uh, very good doc documentation i've gone through this very good good and you can just go through that to know more right um uh, cool so middleware is this and middleware helps in caching and all those stuff so you need to do that um use this api and in the concat you just need to uh, add whatever a request you are adding for example you make another api let's say that will be called you know food api or something um you add it uh, here right food api or things like that you keep adding things right it's just a pattern you just need to understand right um cool so this is store is set up we are uh, doing everything now what i will do is i'll just uh, save it and now we need to wrap this store in front of uh, in above our app right we need to go to index.js um actually we 
need to inst install another package called react redux makes easy to do re redux toolkit stuff with react uh, with all its components so just install this react redux sorry sorry Okay, so this is um, did, uh, okay. So this is set up, right? Uh, this is install. I just rerun the app, and let me just now delete this uh, app dot test. We don't need some files. App dot test uh, logo report logo setup tests. We don't need these things. So I'll just delete this. Okay, cool. You have to do now. So so we need to now uh, wrap our app with this thing, right? So uh, we'll go to index dot js. We'll, imp we'll import these things provider and store and we'll just wrap the app with this so provider um, and store it takes store and let's just wrap it okay so let me show you what i've done in this uh, users.js uh basically this is just uh, a ui to just show you how things are working because you know it would be great to you great if you can see uh, visually uh, uh, how it would, how it works edit user we will uh, use this to when we i'll submit this will make the call to edit the user with a name and id because if you remember uh, because if you see this request edit user update user request it takes uh, the name and uh, it, you can take anything we'll just give it the name new name sorry we'll just give it the new name and a user takes a parameter in the url uh, so uh, you'll also know uh, how to actually in Arctic query you can add a parameter right so that and it uh, to post a user i made this form which just takes a uh, uh, so it takes just these things to just take a to post a user so this will be the form we will be using and this card will contain all the users after we fetch this will be uh, there will be many cards so this is how it looks right now and yeah let's just now dive into Arctic Query and let me show you its beautiful power, right? So, uh, cool. So this is how basically the code looks. If you just want to take a look, so this is basically where the uh, users component starts. Uh, this is a post user state, which is actually this form, and uh, it is setting all the uh, port user uh, user info of the user to be posted it is just uh, that thing and uh, when you click on submit this this is the thing that gets uh, triggered and uh, exactly like that it's for the edit user for just two forms that would help us just uh, make uh, some requests visually right so yeah cool that's it and this is the user component that square this this rectangle box that you see and it's as it is empty uh it is just not showing anything but once we uh, gather all the data and i render this thing uh here user component uh i'm using uh renting one user component so and it is all empty as you can see uh so yeah it is just showing one card so we'll just map a lot of things here right cool so now let's see the power of rtk query right cool so uh, let's go to our users api right so this is what we have we had made one endpoint that will get me all the users and it uh, it is a query now uh, let me tell you the difference between a query and a mutation basically uh, it's very simple so a query is something for example when i load this page this these uh, user detail cards uh, should automatically load right because uh, you know the, these are just a list and uh, they, these are just list and they should automatically load for someone who is seeing right so i don't need to manually click something to make this api request to get all the users so th that's why we have used query there but for example in edit user this should not just just happen we should click something and then it should happen right so when you have to click something manually to do something that is uh, that needs a mutation right and we'll all be doing this so the api request that automatically will happen when you just load the you know web page or something that would uh, that is called query and that uh, there we you will be you will be using builder query else we'll be using builder mutation and we'll be seeing that okay okay so just to revise this is a base url and this query in this url thing is the thing that will be appended here when you make, make a request so this is get users right here and let's just get these users so to export this endpoint so that i can use this this is what you have to do at just in uh at the end so export export 
So here you have to uh, just uh, write in this format use use then get users this get users endpoints name get users and then as it is a query i'll write a query equal to a uh, user api and const here too right so basically that's how you gen uh, make a query here right so now we can use this query so if i now just go to my app go to my ui go to my user component this is the user's component and here this is how you call a query so you have to do something like this okay so just see how normal this code is okay so data or uh, now there will be is loading these are there will be is uh, is error now is error there will be a is error and here you can just equal and use use get user query import it and set this color again and this this is the line that is replacing you all those code you would have already written like like imagine uh like this line is, has just replaced that whole lot of states you should would be maintaining to just know hey is your api request now fetching is it uh is uh, did it just uh you know give you an error everything is just managed by it right i mean uh, this is just one line that you have to write to just fetch a request and you are already getting all the states here right so if this will be true that means your uh, state is loading that, that means your api request is not has been fulfilled till now if uh, his error is true that means something error has come from the server and we'll all be seeing this so this is just one line that just replace whole lot of code right that's the power of like rt query we'll do is now just um you know we'll use this if this is loading is true then i'll probably show it uh you know a h1 tag i'll show loading and if it is not right if it is not i'll just show him this card probably right uh which obviously it does not have anything but yeah so that's it and just down and if is error if there was an error what i'll do is that i'll show him uh, probably just copy this thing and oops error right and yeah that's it this is the one line that it took to just make this api request and obviously you have to set it up uh, these things but you know this is very small thing right when your app grows big now obviously uh, it's like not a good choice if you have a very small project like tic tac toe or something but if you're learning the new but if you are making some big app you can just use this rtk query and it's really great you, it will save you a lot of time and a lot of code okay so i'm just going to save it now so what should happen is that this should reload this uh, this page should load uh, i will save it this this should load and as there is a time before i receive the data i should fetch it right and at that time uh, we just load this line and this is loading is going to say that hey uh, your st uh, state is loading and should show us this and after some time just an empty box after you render because i'm not uh, you know sending any data here if i just write here console.log uh, just print this data and we go to our console here we should see the data after the loading vanishes so i'm just going to reload this now i've saved it i'm going to reload it and you can see it loading it's fetched and boom there is our data right so after you set up the endpoints it just took you this one line to not to remake a request and cache these requests these are being cached and yeah it just got the things right and if i now just render these things right so uh, what i will do is we are getting the in the data right so data dot map and um, it's a user right and i'm going to pass in this guy here and here i'll give it some things cool now what should happen is that if i load it's just press save, save here we just just see all the cards right awesome right 
um so yeah these are your guys and you just so these are we are ready and get request so we have these things right cool now let's do some more cool stuff right so let me show you now how mutation works so this is a query it just loads when it just makes a request when you load this page so this is that is a query but if we want to edit these things right if i want to edit a uh, uh edit a user right i need to press this thing and then i need to then i should you know make a request so in this case a query is not useful we need to use some mutation so what i'll do is i'll go to my queries uh you know where i am declaring my endpoints i'll declare another endpoint so it is another endpoint and i'll give a comma i'll call it edit user i'll do builder dot mutation and just be the same syntax just right here and here i'll pass the url the url of this if i go to my postman and see the api request right so to update a user we need something like this user slash takes the id to and the name that you want to change so what it will do is that it will change this id user's name right so i'll just go with this okay so we'll go back here and what i'll do is i'll say users slash uh make a dollar sign right here right and here i'll pass the id and now you'll be asking oh where are you getting the id well this is where you pass the id right and people the space id cool now if you remember we also need the name to be passed right so new name basically if you call it new name right and so how will you pass it well uh api request has a body so i'll declare uh, just you know write a body here and it will take a object name will be which has a name and it will take new name right because you know if you see the body this is how it takes so i'll just use the same thing right it takes a name and its format url format is like this right and that's it so this is mutation and this is how you export a mutation so what you do is edit use edit user mutation right oh uh, yeah that's just that's it and in mutation so this is how you uh, actually declare a query but mutation you declare something like this like a const then this square brackets as this was so query what a query is does that it will just you know run automatically and it will just give me some data so i'm just uh, uh, getting that here you know uh, i'm getting that but this is a mutation so a mutation as i told you will be calling it somewhere so what is the thing you will use to call it so so here i'll just write something called like edit uh, user right and user comma so this you will sort of act as a command to you know call this mutation call this endpoint right so this is the basic format of a mutation you write something at the first to call this mutation because it's a mutation right you need to call it somewhere right uh, it's not automatically going to be you know working like a query and here you can just in curly brackets you can just and then is is loading is error you can just rename it by putting it in a curly bracket and a colon right so that's how you you know that's the basic difference between a query and a mutation now it must be clear right so uh let's do that right so uh, this handle new user handle edit okay so this is the handle edit submit what is happening is that i have this uh you know this uh i have this edit user thing it takes uh, a name and id so what i'll do is so if i just test it quickly so id and submit you see that all uh, these things have been printed because in handle edit submit i'm printing these things but we don't need these things right and now here i will call this mutation right so what i'll do is i'll just write your async because obviously it's a async function uh because we're making api request right and here i'll just say const result probably and here i'll await for the api request and as i said this is our command to call this endpoint uh right so i'll say edit user and in this in this i'll pass as i said uh as you can see here 
we are passing id and the new name right so this will be passed here right so i'll pass my id and my name right cool um now it will allow it and if you are if you you know to follow more good pra good practices you can just use a try catch block in here so now after this i'll just recommend just add a dot unwrap here so this will just unwrap and give you the result right it's uh, it will catch all the result catch if there is an error and all of that so uh, right so just add this unwrap at the end uh, so after that what i'll do is i'll just print this uh, res right and let's see if it works or not right so i'm gonna save it and yeah let's see so i'll put on the network tab so i can see the networks happening the requests um so let's just see some user that has some id okay actually i have these users right so i want to use or uh, change this user's name from nearby to something else so 3321 3321 and i'll call him let's say sam right now and i'm going to submit it um so submit and okay nothing happened so here you also have to write uh write what kind of request this is so method let's post because it's a post uh, actually it is a put request now let's also remember that this is a update request so it requires a uh, you know a peer authorization token so how to send that in our tl query so if you just uh, in the fetch base query base query under the base url um what you can do is you can just uh, you know add another info to just give it that hey prepare my headers so if you know obviously if you know the headers the authorization pass in uh, are, are, you know are part of a headers of api request so we need to pass the header and i'll just uh, you know just copy paste this thing here because yeah whatever right so um so yeah so bearer token i'm passing it and yeah all of it whatever uh, these things are so right cool so now we are passing the headers to we have uh, mentioned i mentioned everything url method body everything So what I'll do is I'll just all right, cool. Take this here, take this right here. It should not happen like that. Let's call it this. Okay, let's try doing this. Um, okay. So I'm going to submit it again, and it worked. It worked. Uh, did it work really yes it worked okay so now what will happen is that um if i just refresh this this guy's name should change okay but there's a problem see it changed right very cool so what it took us to use this post request was just this one line and we have this is loading and is error too and you can use this to show you know spinners and all of these things uh, happening while you are uh, making this request but i'm not going to do that obviously because you can obviously know how to do that right so th this this is all you need to just make two requests right uh and and it's pretty simple and it, it might uh, look complex but it's just not yeah and as you can see i'm just setting some strings and things are happening so imagine it was a really good app like used by millions of people and like what should have happened i should not have just you know submitted and edited this user and i should not have just should not have to see that see that old name here and then refresh what should have happened that the moment i hit submit if this api request works fine what should happen is that uh, i should just see the new guy here and i should not have to just reload this app right that's that is bad so how to do that and if you have to do implement this thing uh, you know without uh, rtk query it, uh, you know you can just think of the flow first of all you have to make this request and then if it worked you have to make another request and all of it but 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 that is not the case with rtk query this is very simple it just will happen in one two lines that this feature will be implemented so this is the feature i'm talking about rtk query tags this is called automated refetching okay so first i'll implement this tags thing 
and then i'll tell you how powerful this is okay and what's actually happening under the hood okay so first i'll just implement this so this is the you know tag types so these are just some tag types you can give that you're using in this current create api so uh, let's just do that so uh, what i'll do here is that i'll just give tag types just using one use a uh, one tag so let's i'll call it user tag okay so, tag will be associated with the api request so uh, how to associate that is by just is by just you know just writing here provides tags right provides tags and here i'll just write users right so now this api of, of to this get users api request i have associated a string right now what I'll, i will do is that the moment something happens with this edit user request now i'll just so now after this query edit user executes I need to say this API somehow that hey you know, the get users guy the results that it has provided us it has been deprecated or it is just has it, it has been old and it has been updated now and you need to refetch it so you need to invalidate invalidate this um, invalidate the tag associated with this thing right so now it will now know that hey i have to invalidate the api request that is associated with this tag so that is get users so we have caching so the only the things that change after refetching that will only be updated so it's that powerful so now let me just explain what will happen under the hood right so what will happen before what was happening before was the problem was that the moment we edit it and we go back and see the same id and the name would have been just same right and you have to refresh so that you know you again uh, this uh, users.js is lo loaded and uh, this uh, this and this get users query and run is run again and you get the updated list right with the new name but we have solved that with just two lines that now when you press submit you will call this edit user right uh, in this you know you will call this edit user as it was happening then here after this query executes successfully this will invalidate the tag users and it will see oh users is actually associated with this get users so that means that this list which is you know the result of get users request is invalidated and we need to refetch this again right and it will just automatically refetch it and that is so cool um and just with two simple lines of code um and let's just try it right so I'll just do this and let me just open this so that we can see the network requests and here let's try to change this sam again okay so i'll call it now let me call it my name then id is 3323 i guess okay cool so now you know what actually let's just see this guy right because it's beside us and we'll just see the change quickly so 3302 let's hit submit so boom 3302 if i see there you go 3302 id uh, it just changed it right and i mean that is so cool right so if you see the network requests as i said the first request was editing right so if you click on this um and see this request maybe i just make it a bit big so you'll see the first request is to this you know edit user thing and then it was okay and then it knew that hey in, we will invalidate the get user tag and we'll refetch this again and there you go we have this then it made a request to this users get request to this users to get the new tags or get the new results right that's the main and this is the main thing why i made this video to show you the power of just rtk query it's just so cool right it just saves you a lot of time and i just wanted to share that and exactly like that you, this is the main format of mutation and this is uh, format of query and uh, don't think that you can can't uh, you know you can only do a post request or can only do a get request when you load in a query imagine you just have to post something to the server uh, immediately something you know something when the web page loads you can also use a post request here so uh, it's very flexible and uh, so yeah i just 
wanted to show you this and this is basically how rtk query works and this was the main invalidates tags feature is the feature is the main thing that i wanted to show you and so now let's do another thing right so so like we did with edit post like now let's post a new user right and so first we'll make a endpoint right so this is just now once you set up the just basic code now it's just simple you have to you want to integrate a new api you just make an endpoint so i'll just call this post user and uh, it will be a mutation why because you know you have to just add the you know click on the submit button to post a user so it has to be a mutation it's not going to happen automatically right you're not fetching or something like that right so let's make a query here so query would be it would take a lot of things actually it would take uh, you know what i'm just sending an object from there so i'll just say user info um, and i'll send all the info in an object so i'll just say this and i'll just copy this thing from here url okay, so the url is just this users because if i show you the postman um to post a user um you just use users and if i curious to see the body you can just uh, this is all you have to send right so we're going to do that so uh here this will be that object that we're going to send so i'll call it user info and this will be a post request so post and we'll save this and i will now just make use post user mutation save it go to my users um like exactly like the upper guy uh, a square bracket for mutations as i told you then the command that would trigger that mutation so i'll call that uh, let's say post user and let's just copy this thing um, i'm not using this states but i mean this is also like saving a lot of code right and yeah this is just really cool and this is just i'm just using three things here there are more things like is fetching and all of that too right um so yeah um that's it and i'll just use post user mutation um let's just remove this errors name is the same right so maybe i'll just uh, maybe i'll just post user trigger let's call it okay post user trigger right um cool so summit is having this object of things that i want to send so if you just want to see it so i'm just going to show you this so that you're clear what's actually happening so if i just write some things and if i just uh, show you the console here console um and i submit it so i just get this object that i have to send right so what i need to obviously as you could have guessed i just need to send this to my a post user and it will send it in the body right cool so yeah so let's do that so it's basically the same code so i'll just copy it um, right um cool so here i'm telling post user trigger and i'm sending this post user object so now it's done now let's go back to our app and let's try it so let's call him Uma or something. Then call him uh, female, and let's just add the red gmail dot com, whatever. Then active, and I will now just let's let's submit it. And yeah, I guess it worked because it returned the object and it has ID. So, but exactly the problem now. Now, if you will search, we will not find any card here with the 3864 ID. Why? Because we are not updating this list and this is very bad user experience. And how to fix that? And we have to just, you know, just simple. Don't write any code. Just go to your RTK query. And so now we want to update this list. And this list is having this, uh, provides this user's tag. And we just need to invalidate this tag which means that this requests, you know, this requests results have been invalidated and you need to refetch this. Basically, we are just telling it that. Now, if I'll just save that and I go back to my app and I'll make a new user. Basically, I'll just show you the old user. Now, now it should have come. There you go, 3864, right? Because we refreshed, right? 
but now i'll just make a new user here sam mail email ss at threat dot com and status inactive so now this post user will be posted and the previous yeah the get user this list will be invalidated and we will just see the new user on the top of this list so i'll submit it go up and there you go 3867 right it's just you do not have a refresh or anything it's just invalidated and refetched because it has cache and all of that so it's just super fast uh, under the hood and yeah that's just that's it that's all i wanted to show you and yeah that's it i mean just you just need to set up the code first and then it's just adding the requests and doing whatever you want with just two three lines max and that's just super time saver while you make your you know imagine while you just create your ideas build your ideas and i just wanted to share that so yeah that was rtk query and do let me know in the comments did you love it and are you just going to use it in front like i'm obviously going to use it all the time because and that that's exactly i wanted to make this video because it saves a lot of time and just doing repetitive stuff and you can just focus on making whatever you want let me know in the comments if you're watching till now that means a lot to me and um, make sure to subscribe to the channel that means a lot and like this video i'll see you in the next one till then have a great day and keep building I'll submit it, go up and...